film industry, you know, anywhere in the world, including Hollywood, is fragile. Always is, always has been. And I've been, I've been what, in 40 years in and around it, and I've seen it come up and down, up and down, down. It's been written off as dead more times than you could shake, shake a stick at. It's also had moments where it's appeared to be Olympian and unstoppable. Uh, but I would say at the moment it's in pretty good nick. Uh, I'd like to see more medium-sized, and I'm sure everyone will tell you this, more medium-sized films doing better. Uh, it seems to be a kind of hit-and-miss business a bit at the moment. There's a l huge long tail of films uh, that uh, don't ever really seem to get the attention they deserve. I think the biggest problem we got is there's almost too many movies struggling for too little screen, s screen time. So a lot of good films are off, have, have arrived and gone before you even know it. And that's, that's unfortunate. I was pointing out to some people the other day, Chariots of Fire had a very weak, for a very uh, yeah, low grossing first week. Today it would be taken off. Without any doubt at all, Chariots would have been taken off at the end of the first week. As it happened, it built and built and built. And its fifth week used to be its most successful. Now that could not happen nowadays. It literally couldn't happen. No one would wait that long. So there's a f an example of a film that honestly just would have vanished. Do you think we need more patience today? Yes, I think maybe have a little bit more faith maybe hold a film and realize and i tell you what it is investigate what the appeal is and whether people are coming out and recommending it because those recommendations sometimes can take away especially with an older audience um so yeah here's a good, good point i think maybe we just should be a little more patient um, my last question to you is what's your advice to any young person who wants to follow in your footsteps go and produce 50 movies as you have if i'd known what i was letting myself in for i left advertising when i was what 25 26 to go into the film industry if I'd understood what I was letting myself in for, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> so I think at a certain point in life, you've got to hold the bridges, you hold your nose and jump, and then develop resilience. I, te I, you know, I teach a lot. And the thing that comes across when I check the tweets afterwards, the thing that people remember is I talked a lot about resilience. It's really important. I don't know how you teach resilience, but you can be as the most gifted, talented, hardworking people in the world. But if you're not resilient, if you're not prepared to take the knocks, if you're not prepared to accept I mean, my second film was shockingly bad shockingly bad it would have been every reason actually to jack it in so you know what not for me but third film was a success and the fourth film was a success and you keep going so I, d I do think that people need to be resilient they need to understand what they let themselves in for and they need to be prepared to take some pretty tough blows